Hi, welcome to Ace Engineering Academy, Ace Online Platform. Myself, Krishna Reddy, Power Systems Faculty. Today, I am going to explain some basic concepts of electric traction that related to utilization of electrical energy. Now, let us look into some basic concepts. So, what is electric traction? So, first let us try to analyze what do you mean by electric traction? So, we can look into the definition of electric traction like this. The locomotion in which the driving or tractive force is obtained from electric motors. So, here the driving force if you are getting from electric motors, we can call it as what? Electric traction. Okay. So, if you are getting the driving force, the locomotion in which the driving or tractive force is obtained from electric motors is called as what? Electric traction. Okay. So, where this electric traction is used in the system, where we are using this electric traction? So, I think uh, we all of us observed this. So, we can use this electric traction in case of electric trains, okay, tram cars, trolley buses and diesel electric vehicles also. Okay. This is the application of electric traction. We can use it in trains okay, that we generally travel in most of the cases. Now, they are electrical and tram cars, trolley buses and diesel electric vehicles also use this electric traction. Okay. Now, what are the different types of traction systems? Actually, what are the different types of traction systems that we have? Let us observe here. So, we have non-electric traction, non-electric traction system and electric traction systems. We have two types. One is non-electric and the other one is what? Electric traction system. Okay. So, what is the difference? What is the difference that you, that you will get between a non-electric traction system and electric traction system? In case of non-electric traction system, we are not going to use electrical energy at any stage. Okay. These systems do not use electrical energy at any, any stage. They are not going to use electrical energy at any stage. Such type of traction systems are known as what? Non-electric traction systems. Can you state any example for non-electric traction systems? Yes. Steam engine okay. Dry, used in railways. Olden days, steam engine was used. No? So, the, those comes under non-electric type of traction system. Okay. Coming to electric traction system. So, in case of electric traction system, we will be using the electrical energy at one stage or another stage. We are going to use the electrical energy at some stage or other. So, we may not use at all stages, but some stage or other. If we are using the electrical energy, then we can say it as electric traction system. Okay. Now, if you observe these electric traction systems, again they are subdivided into two types. One is self-contained vehicles or locomotives. Self-contained vehicles means they have, they itself have this uh, configuration, self-contained. Example is battery electric drive, okay, battery driven electric drive system, okay, battery will be within the body itself, okay. And the other configuration is, they receive power from the distribution network or substation. So, that is the other configuration. Vehicles uh, which receive the electric power from distribution network or substation, okay. Some if you observe this uh, electric trains, they are going to receive the power from the substations. Okay, so they come under this configuration. Okay, battery drives, battery electric drives comes under the self-contained vehicles. Okay? So which comes under railway electric locomotives, uh, which are fed from overhead AC supply. Generally, if you observe our trains, they are fed from overhead AC supply. No, so and uh, trolley buses, which are supplied with the DC. Okay. So, this is the application point of view. 
Electric traction systems are again two types. They are self-contained and the other one is which are driven by that means we are getting the source from the distribution network or substation. Okay. So here if you observe fed from overhead AC supply in case of railway electric locomotives and DC supply in case of tram cars. So next, coming to the what are the requirements of ideal traction system? We are talking about traction. So what are the requirements that the traction system requires? So first one is high addition coefficient. Addition coefficient should be high. So why the high addition coefficient is required here? Now let us look at this point. High tractive effort, effort as a start is possible to have rapid acceleration. So if you are having high addition coefficient, we can say that we can get rapid acceleration. Rapid acceleration is possible. And the other one is self-contained. Okay, It is preferred to have self-contained. What is the advantage of self-contained vehicle? So you can drive in your own route, but you cannot drive the train, the electric trains, no. It will drive only in its specified route. But if a battery driven vehicle is there, then you can drive on your own way. Okay, that is advantage, self-contained, so it can run in any route. If it is a self-contained vehicle, it can run on any route and uh, minimum wear on track, okay, wear should be minimum and it should be possible to overload the equipment for shorter periods. Sometimes uh, the electric train, suppose if you take Sometimes they may get overloaded for shorter duration. It should have that capability, okay? It should be possible to overload the equipment for shorter periods. For shorter duration, you should be capable to overload them, okay? And it should not result in any pollution. It should not result in any atmospheric pollution. It should be pollution free, okay? High addition coefficient. It should be self-contained minimum wear on track and it is possible to overload the equipment for shorter periods and it should be pollution free okay now and the other requirements are speed control should be easy so you should be able to control the speed in an easy manner no complex circuit is required for controlling the speed or complex mechanism is required and it should not result in any interference with the neighboring communication line if there is any communication line running in parallel with this uh, traction system, there should not be any interference problem. Okay? These are some of the requirements okay, of ideal traction system. Requirements of what? Uh, ideal traction system. Now, what are the different types of traction system that we have? We have steam engine drive, steam engine drive we have and internal combustion engine drive we have and IC engine driven electric drive we have, petrol electric traction we have and battery electric drive we have and electric drive we have. So we, have, we will concentrate, we will try to concentrate on this electric drive, okay, specifically this uh, electric drive. And what are its advantages? Let us look into them. Okay. So what are the advantages of electric drive? So if you are using this electric drive, there will not be any pollution. That is no smoke. Okay. But uh, if you are going for other drives, you may get some sort of smoke. But if you are going for electric drive, there will not be any smoke. By using this electric drive, we can get high starting torque, okay? This is very important, high starting torque, okay? If you are getting high starting torque, what is the advantage, sir? It is possible to achieve higher acceleration, okay? We can get what? Higher acceleration, okay? So 1.5 to 2.5 kilometer hour per second. But if you are going for a steam traction, 0.6 to 0.8 only you will get. But if you are going for electric, no? 1.5 to 2.5 kilometer hour per second you can get, okay. So we can get, uh, once you are getting this high starting torque and high acceleration, so we can get high scheduled speed, we will look at the scheduled speed, okay. So we will get high scheduled speed, that is advantage. 
and increased traffic handle capacity also. Okay, you can handle more traffic because more speed now. So we can handle more traffic, increased traffic handle capacity. So once you are getting high scheduled speed and increased traffic handle capacity, the area required, okay, terminal space, terminal space required will be very less. Yes or no? So this is very important in urban areas this is an, because if you go for larger terminal space, more area is occupied, okay. So that is not, which is important factor in urban areas, okay. So one advantage is high starting torque you will get, high acceleration you will get. So by getting this, uh, you can get high scheduled speed and increased traffic handle capacity, traffic handling capacity will be increased. So due to these two advantages, the terminal space required will be less, okay. So this will be the important factor in urban areas because land cost, land acquisition is also difficult, no? Okay. Now coming to the other points. So by using this electric locomotive, you can start, you can start the engine in moment notice, okay. Uh, you don't require the notice uh, to give to start that uh, engine. Uh, for before hours, any moments we can start the drive. Now. Okay, but uh, if you are going for uh, <coughs> steam locomotive, it takes two hours of time to heat up. Okay, if you are using steam engine drive, now it will take two hours to start. But uh, electric drive, so you can easily start uh, within minutes. Within sorry, not minutes. We, a moment of notice, we can start. Okay, you don't require more time. Just switch on and you can run it. Maintenance cost is approximately 50%. Here maintenance cost is around 50% of that of steam drive, steam locomotive, okay. So maintenance is less. Maintenance time is also less. Maintenance cost is less and maintenance time is also much less comparatively, okay. Maintenance time, maintenance cost is less and we can quick start, we can go for quick start. Very advantage, no? So, if you are going for electric traction, addition coefficient is more. This is the basic requirement, no? Addition coefficient is more. And uh, by going through this uh, electric uh, traction, no? Electric drive. So, regenerative braking uh, is possible. Okay, advantage, no? By going for regenerative braking, uh, we can get the energy back into the network. Okay, it is possible to get regenerative braking with the help of this electric drive. So as there is no smoke released, okay, directly you are using electric drive, there is no smoke in the system. So hygienic point of view also, passengers who are traveling also, if there is a smoke, no, they will feel discomfort. Hygienic point of view also, it is good. The hygienic point of view and healthier, okay, health conditions will be also good. But if you are going for other uh, steam, steam engine drive, there will be smoke, no? So vibrations, vibrations uh, is also less, Vib vibrations in electrically operated vehicles will be less. Uh, but if you are going for other type of drives, no? there will be vibrations in the machine. That is also important, okay? Suppose if you are uh, traveling in a lift, uh, sudden jerk is there, there you will not feel comfortable, but smooth control, you will feel comfortable, okay? So electric equipment with withstand large temporary overloads. So it can withstand large temporary overloads. Temporary overloads can be withstanded by this uh, electric uh, equipment. And here for lighting purpose and driving fans, okay, you don't require, okay, no need to provide uh, Rosenberg generators because this power is drawn from the Power drawn directly from what? Substation, no? So from the substation only, source only, okay? Power can be drawn directly from the source. But there are certain disadvantages also, okay? We have, if you take any, any equipment or any application, there will be advantages as well as disadvantages. What are the disadvantages of electric drive? Let us observe here. So initial cost is high or low? You have high initial cost. So initially you need to invest more amount of money and uh, if there is a power failure, then, then that uh, vehicle will not run. That is the main drawback here. 
पावर फेल्यूर फ्यू मिनट यू कैन काज अ ट्राफिक डिसलोकेशन फॉर आवर्स ओके यू मे गेट इफ देर इज पावर फेल्यूर दैट वेहिकल मे नॉट रन ओके इलेक्ट्रिक ट्रैक्शन इज टाइड अप ओनली इलेक्ट्रीफाइड रूट्स यू कैन यूज दिस only in the electrified routes non electrified routes you cannot go for this okay it can be tied up to only electrified routes okay but uh, if you are going for communication lines which are running in parallel to this uh, electric traction drive so there may be some electrical interference problem okay they may experience what electrical interference problem these are the disadvantages what is that initial cost is high power failure may get dislocation for hours and uh, electric it can be used only in electrified routes only in non electrified routes you cannot use this and uh, if there is any communication line running in parallel if there is any communication line running in parallel to this traction drive there may be an interference problem experienced okay. so what are the system of railway electrification so what are the different systems that are used in railways so if you are going for dc system as well as ac system okay you can go with ac or dc if you are going for dc system so operating voltages are like 600 volts 750 volts 1500 volts and 3000 volts this is the operating voltage but if you are going for single phase ac single phase ac system operating voltage is 15 kv to 25 kv 15 kv to 25 kv operating frequencies are 16 2 by 3 hertz 25 hertz and 50 hertz this is the frequency range and uh, this is the voltage range so generally these voltage ranges are important sir from uh, objective point of view they may ask the questions so dc system what are the voltages 600 750 1500 and 3000 hertz single phase ac 15 kv to 25 kv and 16 2 by 3 hertz 25 hertz and 50 hertz frequency range i mean to three phase ac system whenever you are going for three phase ac system so operating voltage range is 3.3 to 3.6 kv at 16 2 by 3 hertz okay 16 2 by 3 hertz and composite system also there involving conversion of single phase ac into three phase ac or dc okay so you may get also a composite system conversion of single phase ac into three phase ac or now let us look into the train movement and uh, energy consumption okay how the train movement is what are the different configurations this way a minute so here train movement and uh, energy consumption let us observe here what are the types of railway services so we have two types one is for passenger services and the other is coming to goods okay passenger services will be there and goods services will be also there first one is city or urban service and the suburban service and main line service coming to passenger services we can go through this uh, three classifications one is city or urban service suburban service and main line service okay now let us look into what are the details about this coming to city or urban service city or urban service so if you observe there are frequent stops coming to the city or urban services so you will have frequent stops distance between the stops will be very less okay nearly 1 km or less less than or equal to 1 km okay city in case of city or urban services the distance is less than or equal to 1 km okay but uh, in order to achieve this uh, requirement what you need to have we need to have <coughs> high scheduled speed between the stations okay 
and high acceleration and retardation is required. So, in case of uh, city or urban service requirement, so you should select the system such that it should have high acceleration and retardation also, high acceleration and retardation. Okay. Coming to the suburban service, suburban service, here the distance between the stops averages between 3 kilometers to 5 kilometers or a distance of 25 to 30 kilometers or a distance of 25 to 30 kilometers. So, you will have the stops between 3 to 5 kilometers, okay. 3 kilometers to 5 kilometers will be having the stops. So, your distance is 3 kilometers to 5 kilometers in case of uh, that is distance between the stops uh, in case of suburban service, okay. So, in case of the suburban service also we require higher rates of acceleration as well as retardation. We require high, higher rates of what? Acceleration and retardation are required in case of suburban service also, okay. So, in case of city or urban services also we require what? High acceleration and retardation. And even in case of suburban service also, we require high acceleration and retardation. So, coming to this uh, main line service, coming to the main line service. So, in case of this main line service, operation will be done in longer routes, okay. So, longer distances, okay, operation is over longer distances and stops are infrequent here. So, stops are not uh, near. Okay, stops are not uh, frequently taking place. Here, the operating speed is high and acceleration and braking periods are relatively less important. Okay, so coming to this uh, mainline service, we require operating speed as high requirement. Operating speed should be high because it should be traveled. It should be traveled for longer distances. No, it should be traveled for longer distances. So whenever you are tra traveling longer distance, uh, your operating speed should be high. And acceleration and braking periods required will be less. Whereas, coming to these two requirements, city, you require high acceleration and retardation. Suburban also you require high acceleration and retardation. But here, operating speed required will be high. Okay. So, that is about the three requirements. And coming to the goods, goods, there are three configurations. One is mainline freight service local or pickup service and shunting service, okay. So, now let us study about, uh, sorry, now let us try to study about this uh, speed time curve, speed time curve of a train movement, speed time curve of train movement. So, here on y axis we have the speed speed in kilometer per hour, on y axis we have speed in kilometer per hour and uh, on x axis we have time, time that has been monitored. Now let us go into the details uh, about this, okay. So if you observe here, from the time 0 to T1, okay, this is 0 to T1. So, we observe a constant acceleration period, this is constant acceleration, this period is known as what? Constant acceleration that is 0 to A, okay. Now, let us study about that. So, what do you mean by constant acceleration period? What do you mean by constant acceleration periods are here? So, that is from 0 to T1 time. During this period, traction motors accelerate from rest, we are just accelerating uh, the motor is in rest position, now we need to start, okay, we need to start our journey, okay, during this period traction motors accelerate from rest, the current taken by the traction motors and tractive effort are practically constant here, okay, during this period the current taken by the motors and tractive effort will be practically constant, so we are trying to start the vehicle and we are running it, okay, initial moment that is constant acceleration is required, no, whenever we are driving the bike also, initially we are in rest position, now we are starting, so we will accelerate our vehicle, 
So during this period, the traction motors accelerate from rest. That is the constant acceleration period. So this is also known as notching up period. This is also known as what? Notching up period, objective type question. Constant acceleration period is also known as notching up period. So if you observe this car, it is represented by OA. Okay. Now, let us go to this acceleration on speed car. Okay. This is the second interval that you can observe here. That is from A to B. Acceleration on speed car. So whenever you are going for this acceleration on speed car, what is it? So once the starting operation is over, okay, at this T1, if you observe, starting operation is over. Now this T1 to T2 is known as what? Acceleration on speed car. Okay. Starting operation is completed. Starting operation is completed. So you want to achieve 60 km speed, you will increase the acceleration and we will achieve 60 km speed. Okay. That is after uh, starting operation is over, then train still continues to accelerate. Okay. Still continues to accelerate along the curve AB. During this period, uh, the motor current and torque decreases. Okay. The motor current drawn will be decreased and train speed increases. Okay. So that is known as what? Acceleration on speed curve. That is from A to B. So once you reach uh, the required speed here, so this is known as free running time. This is known as free running period. That is from B to C, we can call it as what? Free running period. So now let us, that is from time interval T2 to T3. So now let us observe here, free running period. So what do you mean by free running period, sir? Okay. At the end of speed running curve, at T2, we will attain the maximum speed. Train attains what? Maximum speed. Maximum speed is attained by the train. Yes or no? So, now, during this period, the train runs at constant speed. If you observe here, during this free running, objective type question may be asked, during which period train runs at constant speed? In free running period, train runs at constant speed. Yes or no? So, the speed is constant during which period? Train runs at constant speed during free running period. Okay. Attained at T2 is constant and power drawn is also constant. It is represented by this. Okay. That is about a free running period. Now let us look at the next one. That is coasting this uh, interval is known as coasting. What do you mean by coasting? Let us observe. C to D is known as coasting. So, interval from C to D is known as what? Coasting. So what do you mean by coasting? Let us observe here. So once we are getting nearer to our distance, what do we will do? We will just uh, switch off the supply. And just based on the kinetic energy of that uh, machine or the train, it will get run on its own. Kinetic energy is consuming. So that you will get saving in power, no? Saving in power. That is nothing but coasting. So at the end of free running period, that is at T3, the power supply is cut off. Okay? Power supply is cut off. Okay? So once the power supply is cut off, train is run, train is allowed to run by its own momentum. Okay? So power is being cut off, no? So train runs on its own momentum, okay? The speed of the train starts decreasing. Once you disconnect the power, it is not uh, taking power from the source. Speed of the train decreasing on account of resistance of motion of train, okay? Speed of the train gets decreased. If you observe during coasting, uh, <laughs> okay? So during coasting, if you observe the speed of the train decreasing, speed of the train starts Decreasing during what? Coasting. So you may get objective type question like this. So during which period the speed of the train starts decreasing? The speed of the train starts decreasing on account of resistance of motion of train during what? Coasting. Why it gets decreased sir? Because power supply is cut off and the train is allowed to run on its own momentum. Train is allowed to run its on its own momentum. Okay. 
So, and next coming to the rate of decrease of speed during the coasting period is known as what? Coasting retardation. Okay, rate of decrease of speed during the coasting period is known as what? Coasting retardation. Next. So, why this coasting? Is, is it required, sir? Yes. Coasting is desirable since uh, it utilizes some kinetic energy of train which would be otherwise wasted during braking. So, if you are not going for coasting, suddenly you are braking. The energy is wasted, no? So, we should not waste the energy. We should properly utilize so that efficiency will be more, okay? So, we should uh, utilize the energy properly. So, whatever the energy is stored in the form of kinetic energy that is to be used during this coasting, coasting is desirable because uh, the kinetic energy is utilized properly. Otherwise, if you are suddenly applying the brakes, the energy is lost, okay? So, during this, during this coasting, what happens? Uh, the stored kinetic energy is driving that vehicle, okay? And uh, this is from D to E, it is nothing but braking. Braking, okay? Now, once the coasting is completed, we will apply the brakes to stop the train. So now, once you complete the coasting, we are going for braking. So what you will do in braking? We will apply the brakes, okay? Brakes are applied and the train is brought to stop. Okay, here we need to brought, stop the vehicle. That is about, uh, so here we have analyzed about what factors. So we have seen about constant acceleration during which uh, the motors are being accelerated from rest and it is attains a point A and acceleration on the speed curve, okay? And free running period, where the constant speed is maintained. And during coasting, power supply is cut off. When the power supply is cut off, it is running on its own momentum. Kinetic energy decreases. So, stored kinetic energy gets decreases. So, we are utilizing that properly, okay? And the braking, brakes are applied to stop the vehicle or train. So, this is the analysis of that. Now, let us try to analyze what do you mean by crest speed? What do you mean by crest speed means what? Let us try to analyze. So, what do you mean by crest speed, sir? Crest speed is nothing but it is the maximum speed attained by the vehicle during the run. So, whatever the maximum speed, whatever the maximum speed that can be attained by vehicle during the run time is known as what? Crest speed, okay? So, objective type question may be asked, what is meant by crest speed? Crest speed is nothing but it is a maximum speed that the vehicle is attained during the run time is known as what? Crest speed, okay? So, now let us look into what do you mean by average speed and how do we calculate the average speed? So, here, Average speed means what? The distance covered between the stops divided by actual time of run, okay? So, we, there is a difference between average speed and scheduled speed. Just let us observe that one carefully. The distance covered between the stops divided by actual time of run is known as what? Average speed, okay? Distance covered between the stops, between the two stops, Distance covered between the two stops divided by what? Actual time of run gives the average speed, okay? Now, let us look into the scheduled speed. There is a difference, sir. Observe this carefully. There is a difference between the average speed and the scheduled speed. What is the difference that you will get between the average speed and scheduled speed? Okay. What is the difference between the average speed and schedule speed? Let us observe here. So, here we will include the stop time also, okay? Coming to the scheduled speed, it is defined as what? The ratio of distance covered between the two stops and total time of run time, including the time of stop, okay? But uh, while you are calculating average speed here, stop time is not included. But uh, scheduled speed, uh, 
actual time of run and the stop time is also included here stop time is also included here so as you are including both <coughs> run time and stop time so what is your observation average speed is more or scheduled speed will be more no doubt average speed will be more than the scheduled speed average speed will be more when compared to what scheduled speed because uh, here we are not including the stop time in average speed but stop time is included while calculating the scheduled speed okay now let us look into further details so scheduled speed is always smaller than average speed very important objective type question scheduled speed is always smaller than what average speed scheduled speed will be always smaller than average speed okay so the difference is large in case of what urban and suburban area services why the difference is large in case of urban and suburban services sir and negligible in case of main line service this is also important objective type question scheduled speed is La the difference between average speed and scheduled speed will be large in case of urban and suburban areas and it is negligible in case of main line service why because in case of urban and suburban services the distance between two stops is less okay so that's why the difference is large but in main line service the free there will not be any frequent stops longer routes no okay so in order to have good scheduled speed what you need to do in case of urban and suburban services stops must be reduced number of stops must be reduced and it should have high value of acceleration and uh, va value of maximum velocity so in order to have good scheduled speed what we need to do sir so what we need to do we need to go for high value of acceleration and uh, velocity should be also high okay so scheduled speed is smaller than what these are the objective type questions they may ask scheduled speed will be more than average speed or less than average speed or equal to average speed or it can be all okay so scheduled speed is always smaller than average speed why because while calculating average speed we are not including the stop time but uh, while you are calculating the scheduled speed uh, we are indicating the we are including the stop time that's why it will be less okay so scheduled speed is always smaller than average speed and when you compare urban suburban and main line service where the difference is large difference is large in case of what urban and suburban services okay and negligible is small in case of what main line service so but how do how do you get good scheduled speed sir how can you get good scheduled speed so the free distance between the stops okay number of stops what do you can say the stops must be reduced number of stops must be reduced and you should have high value of acceleration and maximum velocity okay now coming to this scheduled speed uh, depends on what factors okay acceleration and braking retardation maximum speed and duration of stop these three factors the scheduled speed will depend okay acceleration maximum speed and duration of stops so now let us go through this uh, some objective questions like this so which of the following is an advantage of electric traction over other methods so when you compare electric traction with other mode of transports other tractions we can say non electric traction so what advantages you will get so you will get faster acceleration or not okay by using this electric traction we can we will get faster acceleration okay so this is also right faster acceleration you can get and is there any pollution no pollution free no if you are going with electric traction there is no smoke okay healthier or hygienic point of view also it is good so there is no pollution and uh, better braking action yes or no you, you can get regenerative braking 
in case of uh, electric traction and better braking action can be done. So, all the above is the option. Okay. So, when, comp when you are comparing the electric traction with the other, we can get faster acceleration, no pollution, better braking action and these three are the advantages only. Okay. Now, let us go to the other question. The specific energy consumption of train depends on which of the following? Acceleration, retardation, gradient and distance covered all the above. So, it depends on what? All these factors. Okay. Coming to the last, okay. coming to the last one, which of the following happens in condo system? Three phase AC is converted to DC. Single phase AC is converted to DC, single phase is converted to three phase, none. Okay. Now, we have seen about the uh, types of systems. No? In case of traction, we, will have, we have seen types of systems. What are the different types of systems that we have seen? So, here systems uh, of railway electrification. So, we have DC system which operated 600 volts, 750 volts, 1500 volts and 3000 volts. And a single phase AC system, we have 15 kV to 25 kV voltage range, 16 2 by 3, 25 and 50 hertz frequency range. And we have three phase AC system, 3.3 to 3.6 kV and 16 2 by 3 hertz. And composite system involving conversion of single phase AC into three phase AC or DC. So, this composite system comes also known as that condo configuration. So, single phase AC is converted into what? Three phase. So, this is known as condo system. Single phase AC is converted into what? Three phase configuration. Okay. So, so this is about some basic idea about uh, traction. So, I will uh, try to analyze one more concept from protection point of view. Okay. From power system protection. How do you identify? A relay to be a directional or non directional. So, how to identify relay to be directional or non directional? Relay to be directional or non directional. So, where do you use a directional relay and where do you use a non-directional relay? Let us try to observe. Here, suppose if you take a radial system. So, radial system, radial system, the source is connected only at one end and if you take uh, three, three sections, first section is protected by relay 1 second section is protected by relay 2, third section is protected by relay 3. Okay. So, during normal condition, what is the direction of current observed here? Normal condition, the direction of current observed by the relays will be in this way, okay. source to load. So, load is connected different buses. And if you consider the faults in different sections, suppose if you consider the fault F1 here. Is there any change in direction of current? No. So, fault F1 is observed by all the three relays in this direction. Okay. Now, if you consider the fault F2 here, this fault F2 is not censored by relay 3. Fault F1 is censored by relay 1 and relay 2 only. Now, if you consider the fault F3 here, it is not censored by relay 3 and relay 2 and fault F3 is censored by only relay 1. So, if you observe from normal condition to fault condition, is there any change in direction of current? No. As there is no change in direction of current, in case of radial system, which type of relays are used? So, as there is no change, there is no change 
in direction of current as there is no change in direction of current from normal to fault condition from normal to fault condition fault condition relays are relays are non directional yes or no relays are non directional the relays which are using here are non directional okay r1 is non directional r2 is non directional and r3 is also non directional now let us go through an interconnected system an interconnected system also interconnected system and observe here which relay is to be directional which relay is to be non directional so interconnected system minimum of two relays are to be operated okay for protecting the line so r1 r2 protects the first line and r3 and r4 protects the ne next line so minimum of two relays are to be operated for protecting so during normal condition let us observe like this r1 observes in this direction r2 r4 and r3 okay sources are from both the sides okay now if you consider the faults suppose if there is a fault f1 here so due to fault f1 r1 observes in this direction r2 direction gets reversed r3 r4 will be same now if you consider the fault f2 in this direction in this section for the fault f2 r1 r2 will observe the same direction of current but r3 direction gets reversed so here if you compare in the relay 2 and relay 3 there is a direction of current change from normal condition to fault condition so relay r2 is to be directional relay r3 should be directional and r1 is non directional as there is no change in direction of current so when there is no change in direction of current we can treat it as a non directional relay if there is a change in direction of current we can take it as what a directional relay and that said direction should be same as what fault current direction and in case of interconnected system minimum of two relays are to be operated for isolating the faulty section and healthy section so this is also important objective type question sir in case of interconnected system interconnected system minimum of two relays are to be operated two relays are to be operated are to be operated for clearing the fault so generally the objective type question will be asked in case of interconnected system how many number of relays are minimum to be operated for clearing the fault so minimum of two relays are to be operated for clearing the fault because the fault current will be fed from both the sources okay so so thank you for giving me this opportunity in today's class i have discussed about some basic concepts of traction and how to identify relay to be directional or non directional